Hello and welcome. My name is Sean Lacey of Lacey Maths and Stats Consultancy and this video is a short presentation on how to produce interaction plots in ggplot2. I'm going to look to present three types of interaction plots ranging from two factors up to four factors using ggplot. Um, so first I'll just uh, I'll set up the data frame. So the data frame quite basic here is I'm going to just have 264 I suppose ID measurements now the IDs aren't actually needed for the graphs but nonetheless I suppose just to kind of have an ID measurement then I'm going to look at line 9 is where there's going to be a between subjects factor with two levels line 10 and between subjects factor with three levels line 11 and between subjects factor with four levels and then I'm going to set up kind of, um, a within subjects factor that has five levels which I'm calling here time or t1 up to t5 but I'll leave, I call them time then later on and then I'm putting them all together like this and that'll give this data frame here so quite a nice big data frame and the reason we need a big data frame is because of looking at when it comes to the four-way kind of interaction plot there will be a, there's obviously a lot of subgroups that's going to be needed for that so we need a large data frame it's then going to look to convert the data from a, a wide format to a long format using the gather function part of the tidy r package and then the next bit is just a bit of formatting i'm just going to relabel T1 to T5 is time 1 to time 5, just I suppose for a, a small bit of context uh, for the graphics. And then I just set up the pro uh, properties for each of the factors, as in, which would be factor, group, and level, uh, and time, and define them all as factors. That's all. And so the next thing then is just to do the two-way interaction. Now, there's a few ways you can do this, I suppose, at the start. When I was using RStudio, I would have used the GG line function, which is part of the GG pub R package. But I, uh, I suppose over time, I felt nearly happier looking at generating uh, summary statistics and then graphing that so just to kind of give you the way that I do it now of, of recent I suppose is I'd first look at producing the statistics that I want to actually use in the graph so the interaction plots that I'm going to use here will be error bar plots uh, so to draw an error bar plot I need to know what the mean is and an error bar the error bar I'm going to work from will be using a margin of error so obviously the mean plus or minus a margin of error will give us a confidence interval and I'm going to look at doing 95% confidence intervals in this case. So the plots essentially will be of 95% confidence intervals. So line, I suppose, 42 to 44 is just looking at pro uh, producing statistics uh, or descriptive statistics of a measurement, which I'm just calling measure in this case, uh, with respect to two factors. So a within subjects factor and a between subjects factor in this case. And this is the information I get back. So this, these are measures, I'll just scroll up here, fraction. So you can just see here, I'm looking at time at the various time points, factor at its various levels of uh, low and high, then there is mean and there's the uh, confidence intervals. And I would just want to plot that then. And this process that I'm looking at here doing here, when it, set, when it steps up to three, way, uh, three factors or four factors, it's going to be the same process. It's just adding on a new layer in relation to the variable that I want to plot or the factor I want to plot. So what I'm going to look at doing then here is, I suppose, first, my, generally my uh, way of doing producing graphs is I kind of look at producing the default graph first, and then I do the tweaking with regard to scaling and the labeling, the axes and the colors, I, if I want to change the colors. So the first bit here is if I just, lay, uh, I suppose, give the small bit of explanation to what's going on in the arguments. So I'm obviously using the ggplot function. Um, stats two way are the descriptive statistics that I produce up on line 42 to line 44. And then what I'm looking at, um, graphing will be on the x-axis is going to be time will be along the x-axis the y-axis which is the the main measurement obviously is just going to be mean in this case and then they're going to be split with respect to a factor so time and factor are the two factors in this case time being the within subjects factor group being the between subjects factor i'm going to use the team bw on line 51 i'm looking at joining the points that are going to be plotted which are the mean points with respect to lines because i want obviously those kind of lines joining up those points and then on line 52, I'm just, I suppose, scaling the size of those points that I want. And then line 53 is where I'm plotting the upper and lower uh, compass intervals. And at each point, then I just set the, I suppose, the the size of it, whether it be a line or the point. And position dodge is just where the graphs kind of have a small bit of a space in between them. So if I plot this first, so this is kind of the default one initially. So this is what I get back. Not overly interested in, I suppose, trying to interpret this. This is essentially just look, how do I do a kind of an interaction plot with two factors? So this is the graph that I get back. I would call this kind of the default setting here in ggplot. So my next step, and this I'll, I'll repeat this then for the three factors and the four factors, is where I want to fix up the scaling of the axes, the labeling of the axes, the font size, and then the colors as well. 
so that's the default graph and then my bit of uh, tidying up here so on line 57 so i'm taking the previous graph on line 57 i'm just looking at labeling the axes at line 58 i'm scaling the axes line 59 is i'm just looking at the text size and I, it's a small bit of a maneuvering of the legend I, at the moment i would have i suppose i like that the legend is below the graph um, and then on line 60 is i'm just doing the colors okay so what colors do i want the lines to be and this is what i get back okay and obviously you can just enlarge that here and this then is the two-way interaction again and i'm not not overly interested in any kind of interpretation here but this is kind of the two-way interaction plot that i'd have then so moving briskly on then so the next bit then is just to repeat the steps now but looking at three-way interaction so essentially all this different in the descriptive statistics here it is i'm just adding on a new factor including the new factor which is going to be a group factor generate the statistics again so this is quite nice nicely done so i have the descriptive statistics with time factor and group all being actually factors then there is the mean and the composite interval and then the plotting is the same i'm very similar here all that i'm doing different in this line so i won't explain each line here but all that's actually different in this graph is i'm just going to do a facet grid so i'm going to split the graph that was kind of produced in the pre the previous graph but i'm going to split that with respect to the group which would be group one group two and group three in this case here so if i plot this again the default version first this is what i get back so i'm now i'm looking if you look at this we, the x-axis is going to be the within subjects factor the of the colors of the bars is a between subjects factor and then the facet grid is also another between subjects factor so here we've plotted the three factors and then I can just do the, the bit of formatting again. This is the exact same as previous. All this changing here is just the scaling of the axes that I'm using. The same, uh, I suppose, with regard to the font size uh, and the legend position. Lines 82 is looking at the color. Oh, and the additional bit here, just and I just said I just show it, is if we wanted to change the background of the facet grid. Now I'll just pop up the previous one here just so we can actually see it again. Um, I'll just pop this up a second. but I, And look, this is just to change it. So if we didn't want the gray background here to be the, for the facet grid you have have options to change that and i just wanted to kind of show that here so on line 83 is just where i'm changing the background to white nice and plain and look this is the graph that we have here and this is where there's been three factors now being plotted last one then to step it up and i suppose it gets more complicated the more factors we introduce into a model uh, i personally find having four factors in the model quite actually hard to interpret and if, if something's hard to interpret and it's hard to actually even communicate what the result actually means, you'd have to kind of pause and say, look, well, well what is the use of it? But nonetheless, in some disciplines, four-way interactions are quite useful. So I'm just going to uh, reproduce, uh, or sorry, not reproduce, but look at uh, repeating the steps that I would have done previous, but having a fourth factor. You can see all that I'm doing in this case here for the descriptive statistics to produce another factor is I'm just put introducing another a factor in the group by here. That's all that's happening here. The other factor being a level. This is what we get back if I scroll up here just so we can see the titles. These are the various factors. So now we've time as a factor, factors a factor, group and level, they're all the factors. And then when it comes down to the plot, very similar to the previous one, all that I'm doing differently in the facet grid now is I'm just doing the facet grid as group by level. And this is going to look at produ uh, producing the facets horizontally and vertically. So just to see what that looks like here, I won't explain the other previous lines, 94 to 98 because they're very similar to actually the exact same to the previous ones. So this is the graph that we get back. So this is obviously where we kind of have a matrix kind of uh, looking of a graph. But again, without looking to formatting it yet, you can see time along the horizontal axes. Then what we're plotting uh, as in the colors of the bars is, got, is factor. And then going across uh, horizontally, you've leveled one to up to four. And then vertically going uh, up and down, whichever way you want to look at it, you've group one to group three. Okay, so this is basically where we're plotting the four factors. Small bit of formatting at the very end, which is just looking at the colors again. I don't think I change much with this. Obviously, besides just the, the actual scaling has obviously changed a small bit. Line 104 is looking at the font size, the legend position. Line, oh yes, line 105. The one thing I just said, I just do a small bit different here, is in line 105 is I just rotate uh the labeling of the x-axis not the x-axis but the ticks along the x-axis i just put that at a five to five degree angle uh, and you'll see what i mean now there in a, in a minute 106 is just looking at the background to the facet grid and 107 is just looking at the colors and this is the graphic that we get back okay and very similar again i'm just adding on a new bit of code each time when i produce this and i suppose the new bit in for this last graph is just where i just rotated the, the labeling of the ticks along the x-axis. Now, technically they weren't needed, but sometimes I find when I do a graph like this, 
the labeling of the ticks along the x-axis can overlap with each other so rotating the text a small bit can be quite helpful and i just felt it might be just useful to, uh, to share that with you here as well okay so look that's it that's the three types of interaction plots that i would most co uh, commonly use and just how i would generate them using our, our studio and mainly using the gg plot function like always with these videos if you find them useful uh it's great that you share it uh like like the channel and you if you have not or uh, sorry like the video or subscribe to the channel if you if you've not already done so and you'd get updates to when more videos will be uploaded in the coming weeks and months uh, as always with this if you have any comments or any suggestions maybe on code that could be used because there's multiple ways of i suppose doing a certain a graph in our studio so if you'd maybe uh, suggestions of more efficient types of code happy for you to share them below in the comments and equally if you have suggestions on other videos that you might uh, like to see a demonstration of then happy for you to uh, put them down in the comments as well below okay that's it bye now